I'm doing a documentary about women in hip hop, and you had some uh, analysis they don't on that. In, they don't belong in hip hop. Women can't rap. Keep the bitches out of hip hop. <laughs> the standard of female MC is fucking low, and the reason is. It's because there's not enough female MCs, so you don't push each other to be better. It's accepted. I swear it's accepted that girls can be worse at spitting because they're girls. Why is that? It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, yeah, uh, uh, she's right because she's a girl. If you want to get treated equally, if you ain't good, you ain't good. It's quite simple. Just because you're a girl, you should be better at spitting. Like, get your shit together. All those fucking sick girls out there, do your thing, baby girl, you know, beep you all day, son. But fucking hell, man. Standards are standards, innit? If you've got a fanny or a witty, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> Get your shit together, son. <laughs>
to be like, oh, we're looking for a girl to be in our video and this is what we want to do. Oh, to we'll us. It's like, what that. are you fucking mad? Like, do you know the whole who watches these videos? Do you know young people like hip hop? Do you know girls are like, oh, I want to be accepted. What do I do? This is what I have to do to be accepted. And that's the limelight and what gets pushed out. This new rule, man. This is this is this is me expressing myself as an artist. You know, just being an artist without all the strings attached. You know, I think first and foremost that's who I am, and I think uh, somewhere along the line we lost we lost the scope of that, of what I am and who I am and what I do. You know, in the midst of federal investigations and beefs with numerous rappers, I think we lost sight of what Ja Rule really represents and that's a great artist you know I, I i i make music from the heart i'm passionate about it and and a lot of artists can't say that obviously they're very very sexualized which um yeah i'm not really a fan of <laughs> obviously um i'm really conscious of like body image and self-esteem and i don't really like that being promoted to young girls um, you know, wanting to look like that and thinking you have to have certain dimensions of each part of your body and everything. Um, but, you know, that's always been the music industry, so. I'm nearly 68, I started playing music when I was, when I was about 13, really. Eventually turning professional fully when I was about um, 20. We then went on to record with uh, EMI, and do more major tours, uh, notably with Chuck Berry, with um, Fats Domino, particularly good tour. That was in 75 or something. And 73, the American and English tour with David Bowie. We were, made three albums and about 10 singles. we just come from Bristol to Axis Heart, going to film with Sarah Madeline. Looking forward to seeing Sarah do her stuff. Well, what do you expect her vibe to be? Quite gentle. Do you think we might become little mates? Yes. Um, we've made some good friendships so far from the uh, other girls that we've uh, seen. So I'm sure there's more friendships to be made. What is your take on female rappers in the UK hip hop scene? Um, I don't think it's enough. I think like if girls are writing bars, then just obviously fucking go for it why would you not what is hip hop to you i don't know i don't want to say like a way of life because that just sounds cringy uh hip hop to me is poetry over beats but it's um uh, sort of really honest self-expression and i guess it came from a place of like no money and honesty like against all sort of the like mainstream music that was coming out yeah, my name is Fuck You, bro. I'm dreaming if you believe in it, you're actually chosen anybody up. It's 8 a.m. and you're drunk outside the chip shop. Dude on the tube, banking with a Starbucks cup, young pup. Were you the runt of the litter? I've got somewhere to be, let's get this done a little quicker. I'll go back to working now, you enjoy your liquor. Facts are ruining my journey, makes me half a pint of bitter. Sick of the new average brother, tell ya. There was, there was not really a, a, a standout female that I could say, yeah, it was her that made me want to do this. It wasn't a female or a male that made me want to do this. It was just music that made me want to do this. Along the way, I've been inspired by many musicians, um, females and males. Probably was Lauren, you know. Probably was Lauren Hill still. I liked her, um, her, her aura. Do you know what I mean? I feel like she has a very dominant presence through music, whether it was like a live performance or on a track. Do you know what I mean? And she didn't use sex or like materialism to, to to push her to let people know she's here but i suppose the way that female rappers <laughs> i just said it myself what needs to change for it not to be necessary to make the distinction between it being you know it's a good female rapper of what what needs um, to happen and how people, far off that are we? Maybe people's mindsets like a little bit and maybe just for more females to start rapping as well um, and just do the thing. <laughs> I 
Okay, well, I've got a clear answer for that. My brother, um, he's like seven years older than me and when I was little, I'd be falling asleep in my room next to his with the big bass lines, with all the good stuff, like AZ, Camp Low. He, he would play like Mob Deep. I, so I, I was getting it like osmosis through the wall, you know? Yo, yo, yo. I remember a big turning point for me with hip hop when I decided I wanted to rap was when my brother gave me um, Little Kim Hardcore and still to this day it's one of my top five hip hop albums. I think she's amazing, so I was like, I wanna be like her. Uh, you got it going on. What? What? I used to be scared of the dick. <laughs> we filmed with Shady and Madeline Dunbar so far, and they were so energetic, um, full of passion as well. I uh, really know their stuff. They're positive. Uh, they're lively, but they're real um, punchy with it, weren't they? Like the whole. The whole um, aura about them was good. Uh, plus, they're really friendly, happy to jam for a bit. Uh, yeah, and hopefully, Bobby's on the same sort of level today, get some good filming done. The way that female rappers um, have, you know, took their ground and claimed it and created a platform, you know, even down to like Miss Dynamite and people like that. <laughs> 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 I don't know, you just, you're born who you are, I suppose, aren't you? But um, I found my love for music. I recognised it um, when I was around eight years old. Um, just a general love and passion for music. But it grew widely at that age because I started to write poetry at that age. Um, and that quickly progressed into lyrics. By the time I was 13, I was in the studio like every single day just learning everything, learning how to DJ, learning how to produce, just learning everything. At that point I had to learn bars, you know, I just used to write pages and pages, didn't know what I was doing. Are you going to be a rapper one day? Maybe not. Why? Because that's where I can't really do that. Why? Can you do rapping hands. Can you do rapping hands? Yeah. Can you show me? I started getting into hip hop when I was about age 17, I was at college and I started not going to classes because I realised it was much more fun to go to the park on my own and listen to like Jurassic 5 and Dilated Peoples and Skinny Man who I was listening to, Task Force and stuff in the park on my own. Yeah, I really fell in love with it then. Serious right now. Oh my god! I haven't got any mascara on, so I'm not looking my freshest just yet. But um, good morning, section Red World. Um, we are now en route to oh, do me. <laughs> we are now en route to Brighton. Stuck in a little bit of traffic. Actually, a lot of traffic. I'm trying not to blow my top because. Ah! Who are we going to be filming with next? Bobby Johnson. And now we're finally breaking through the scene. I see your masculine energy, but with a new tide will rise the rawest of femininity. Cause this is womanhood in realest form. When knowledge and power and strength for goddess is born and red is the dawn, the shepherd's warning. The storm is brewing with form and movement we've heard the calling. They're ready for us now. Maybe they can accept us as equals. Use your ears, not your eyes, and maybe, just maybe, our words would reach you. Maybe even teach you. How do I want to be perceived? As 
just unique like not because i feel like the the approach i take and the route i take it is it's a unique one it's not like as much as people want to compare especially women to each other even though there's fuck all alike between whoever and whoever how, how do i feel that my bars compare um i don't know about that question <laughs> I don't know, I just don't like the word compare. King of the Pharaoh, running of the bloodline, astrological knowledge of the night sky, domination, infatuation, mind escapism, pyramid vibration, adopted illusion, beings of persuasion, mind alteration, realliterating belief of the pagan. Pharaonic bloodline, echo of the night's cry. Demonic entities darkening the bright lights. You're not recognizing the devil in disguise if you're fully absorbed and brainwashed with lies. And I'm speaking my truth from my own observation. How base trust with a secret foundation? Where is the peace in the interrogation formed by police and their administration? Big up the love and the positive vibration. Wherein that brings the retaliation, the mind of unconscious that needs to awaken, amplify truth to bring realization. They they worship the monarch as godlike figures despite their guns and pulling of the triggers because it's all about the rise of their figures half the world is starving i call them grave diggers they walk the red carpets resembling the bloodshed bright reds yeah they're fucked in the head yeah a few comments here and there do compare me and leisha me and leisha are two complete separate eyes she's talented and incredible in her way and i'm talented in my way but i feel like it's just for the fact that we're both female both black both from birmingham there's always going to be comparisons regardless how how different yeah the female rappers in the charts at the moment um, I don't really think of them, I, don't, I wouldn't really compare them to the female rappers in the 90s because I don't think they're doing what those women did at all, really. Obviously we've got the Foxy Browns, we've got the little Kims who were all about sex, but that was a choice they made, you know? But back in the day in the 90s, it, you didn't need to be like that. Like Lady of Rage, she was just like, whatever, all rough and stuff with my afro puffs, you know? And I think um, it's annoying that you have to be like on display to be considered a good rapper and I mean obviously the way the world is everyone wants everyone to be attractive but I think it's excessive people like Lil Kim I mean uh, Nicki Minaj that's too much you know and now, now she's trying to uh, moan about everyone talking about her ass sorry I guess I question how much um, how much control they have over their careers at all whether they write their lyrics um, maybe I shouldn't question those things. I question that about the male artists as well. Um, but I think I think I think of them as performance artists. So I don't really think of them as, as, as hip hop acts. So do you feel you have to uh, a sort of play like act up on an image that you're sort of creating? No, I think that's ridiculous. I think you be who you who you are. If you're talking like mainstream, like. I don't want to give her a shout out, but you know, like fucking Iggy Azalea or any of that shit. Like even Azalea Banks, like she's always fucking arguing as well. But yeah, yeah, put them on, of course. Um, you just mentioned Azalea Banks. I shot a music video with her before, and really? something that struck me as unusual mm. is that when I went to go and meet her when she arrived with her manager, I went to go and shake her hand and introduce myself, and she didn't shake my hand. Oh. And I was informed later that she doesn't touch people. Okay. That's the type of stuff that makes me think that maybe... That's not real. That's not fucking real. That's, it's nonsense. That's it's marketing. That's ludicrousy, mate. And, yeah. and it's all this What's kind of feistiness about? about women being kind of feel like they have to be over the top and kind of tough to be a part of the men's game as, as it can be seen yeah, by some. Just be, just be like, if, if that's who you are, then fine, fuck it, be who you are. But don't pretend to be someone you're not. Like, why would you do that? I don't understand that. Outrageous behaviour. Um, I, the luckiest one, to, from my, my opinion, to get to do this with was Madonna, but it was always courted outrageousness. It, she seemed, at one point, to me, to be only outrageous, not tremendously backed up with huge, huge talent. So I think she made the best of what she's got. But having lasted that long in this business, in the world, the business I was in, is is an accolade. You can have a persona and be a shit rapper. You can be a sick rapper and just be normal, just be humble. And, and what is a rapper supposed to be like? I don't, I don't really have like a gimmick or anything like that. It just tends to be me.
I just become a more exaggerated version of me, you it know, I don't really change things, yeah, yeah you, and, and I think you can tell when people do, like for example, in Azalea with you know, her quite obviously putting on an accent and emulating something that isn't actually like who she is or where she's from, it's like performance art, but everyone's entitled to do their own thing, so if she wants to do that then that's cool, but I don't really see her as a hip hop artist. You know, you never see her laughing, she doesn't crack a smile. And it's like, I don't think no one's like that in real life, you know, I think that's like how she does her thing. And I think that kind of separates you from her somehow. Like you can never feel like you're really connecting with her, her, her real person. It's not really them, I don't think a lot of the time, obviously people write for them and they're just all about like their ass and just stuff like that. And I just don't think <laughs> right, that's a very good message really. Uh, right mate. Okay, I'm good, If you want to come out in fucking last year's two, three years ago tracksuit, old dirty trainers and sandals and you know I'm in a beanie, then do you? I think it's more about your fucking your quality of your music and what you're writing. I turn up to shows and my joggers and I'm dirty because I just finished work. Like <laughs> if I had time to change my clothes, I would. But your image is not really what it's about. That's not hip hop to me. No, them Marcus nicks aren't venomous and try par the mix on a regular. Try at harbour the stars are evident and crap when bombarded with evidence arguments with half ass relevance. Can't keep your guard up, not intelligent or smart enough to come with anything. So don't start, I'm done with the pettiness. Oh, dead it quick with eloquence, effortless. How I develop a sentence, said it with sentiment, not for the hell of it. Never forget, I said it all for your benefit. Nevertheless, I'm getting bored of your negative talk and expression by thoughts on enemies. Form reptilians, sworn to befriend me, cause they're short, I'm more than a lever be. Everyone's unique, everyone's got their own little flow. And that's what I'm starting to recognise. So you have to push your individuality. Well, you're good at. You don't yeah. have to worry about. Yeah, you don't have to think I have to be like that or I have she's to do good. it that way. She's yeah, like I need to do that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, no, so, it's expressing you. Don't let him in. Don't are. let him in. He's fucking um, sorry. I'm sorry. Road rage. I started listening to hip hop really, really young. Yeah, you know I mean, and um, especially UK hip hop. Like UK hip hop's always been something that I've really, really loved and enjoyed. Um, I think I started writing when I was like 10 or 11, so, and I was writing poetry from younger than that as well, so like, yeah, I kind of got into it that way, just writing all the time. Laura has begun rapping as well. Is it? A little bit, yeah. So, yeah. I'm just struggling on the delivery side of it. It's yeah, not that I can't write, and I've got loads of stuff that I want to perform, but uh, it really is just that barrier I'm getting over with the confidence thing. Yeah. And I can get up on stage and do anything else and talk and post and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But because it's raw and the stuff that, you know, that actually that means something to me, mm. I then, like, I know people are going to judge. So I know then I'm just going to actually, like, I'm going to feel it more if it's going to be it's criticism. Like judgment, yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah. but <laughs> it's just so getting past that hurdle. So. How long have you been rapping? Um. I don't know, maybe like, not that long, like a year now, probably. Um, like the people that I mentioned before, One Line Sound, they would always have like big ciphers around there. And um, I just get involved in that. I just started writing loads of stuff. And yeah, probably about a year ago now, I see. I think hip hop yeah. was born from the voice of the voiceless, writing the wrongs of society, sort of uh, trying to deal with oppression and trying to correct all the misdemeanors that had taken place. Um, hip hop's expression, hip hop's a freedom, hip hop's sex, hip hop is fun, hip hop is vibes, hip hop is love, hip hop is jokes, hip hop is anger, hip hop is angst, hip hop is life. Look at Public Enemy, you know, fight the power, all yeah. these things. This came because this was a um, come from a generation that felt um, disenfranchised, that felt disconnected, that felt oppressed, that felt like they were victims of society and wanted to take that power back and give themselves a voice, represent a voice of a generation and right the wrongs of society. How can you say that's a bad thing? That's no, a good thing. That's, that's so really, far, yeah. far removed from people walking about going, <laughs> check how much bling I got, check how much liquor I can pour away, look at all my bitches. Yeah. Now hold it really unsubtly. <laughs> Luke, I made it, yay! <laughs> that way? It's like you filming the whole thing, isn't it? This way? Or... I don't know. Guys, stop being so lost. <laughs> uh, I, I, I reckon straight up for a bit more than right. You think? That's assertive, that yes. is. Yes! We've got somewhere to camp. 
<laughs> just need some leaves, big leaves, some elastic bands, some matches, and some soup. <laughs> some soup. Yeah. Soup on. <laughs> and yeah. don't forget the bread meat. Hip hop just for me, just the expression of your soul, man. Like your deepest, darkest, or best bit. Do you know what I mean? It's just everything. It's just like, I think it's a beautiful art form. And yeah, it's just your truest expression of self, I think. As long as you're true to yourself when you do it, obviously. This depiction on my face is set in a disgrace. I travel through the plains of fate and come out even stronger, mate. All my pride and pain is hidden up inside my name. Bobby Barker jumps set and fire to this facet game. I'm wrapped up in this, trapped up in this unshiftable shame. I'm hacked up in this factual premise of prison again. Promise a change as long as again is seen. I'm rising to the levels of the people I admire. It's meant to be spiritual, it's meant to be uplifting, it's meant to be an outlet for people to get away from whatever they're going through, whatever they're struggling with. And I feel, but I feel like the, mu the musicians themselves are deteriorating and it's not, it's not that no more. Do you know what I mean? It's just who owns the most, who has the most cash, who has this, who has that. But it is meant to be uplifting, it is meant to be spiritual, it is meant to be an outlet for people to get away from, from whatever they're going through and have hope <clears throat> in life for themselves. There's other rappers like that that are just doing it for the expression and it is just for the love and if they can make it somewhere and get a bit of cash in their pocket so they don't have to stack shelves at Sainsbury's like me, then that's awesome. But I think a lot of people expect a lot. They think that music is a way to make money and it really isn't, man. Unless you're rocking shows constantly, the money's not there. If uh, a record label exec said, look, we like what music you're doing, you can make whatever music you want, we can sign you, you can have whatever deal you and your team are, are happy with, but we're gonna sex you up a lot. <laughs> we get pressure, well, I didn't necessarily get that pressure myself, but like, I think... No, not you. Yeah, yeah, like women in, scene, in the scene, like, we get pressured, or just mean. from, like, media, like, what the media is showing them, think that, like, they've got to, like, dress a certain way or act a certain way to be a female in hip-hop, and it's almost like, is done on an extra level because they are a female in hip hop and because it is seen as a more like kind of masculine scene so they're like doing it on a next level that maybe isn't as like fucking extreme in other genres um but yeah like i think we need to stop like if we say no then <laughs> what are they gonna do <laughs> you know what i mean like um no that's not i think <laughs> I don't know if I sound like a feminist for saying this, but every female is like sexy in her own way, in my eyes. Yeah. A lot of the greatest people, in my opinion, the, the, if we're talking about the females, weren't necessarily glamorous women. I mean, Janis Joplin, who didn't, wasn't around long, bless her, but particularly, I know it's subjective, wasn't, she wasn't there because she was pretty. She was there because she rocked like crazy and gave a huge energy on stage. For a label to kind of say to me, you could only be signed if you started wearing like heels and dresses. That doesn't portray who I am as a person. So how could I expect my music to connect with people that would relate to what I'm saying if I'm not even being me through and through? Uh, yeah, I guess there's a lot of pressure to do the whole sexy thing, for sure. Um, like actually, I'm in talks with someone at the moment who is talking about helping to manage me. And then they said, oh yeah, we've got a really good DJ for you. She's a chick. I was like, wicked. And they went, I said, why is she good? And they were like, oh yeah, she's got blonde hair, look good next to her brown hair. Which immediately makes me think, ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> There's a new wave of like pop stars in hip hop and I think it's really weird, this kind of weird junkie culture thing or men trying to be pretty boys. Like it's not women that are just doing it. Like there are some women that play up to the whole sexy thing like the amount of times I've heard someone say oh change your image and get a stylist and work it this way that's not for me and I think most actual hip-hop fans aren't really asked what you look like they just want to hear your bars like I'd rap with a mask on and be quite happy with that you know. Um, Joni Mitchell I, I, I think she's very attractive but she's not beautiful not in the sense of you have to be beautiful to sell records she wrote some of the probably the best songs that America has ever come out of America for a woman and Carol King the same Carol King not beautiful those people but their talent came through um, they didn't need as as we we can see they didn't need any gimmicks 
or special shows, their music spoke for them. But these days, it's more anything goes. I find a bit more, personally, I find it a little bit more shallow, but hey ho. I think we need to stop being so epically feisty and stop being so epically sexual because um, we, we don't need to prove anything anymore, yeah? Vaginas are fucking serious, right? Dicks are great, vaginas are serious, yeah? We can relax now, we can rap, just rap. Doesn't need to be about this and this, just rap. I'm not here to mess around, 22 caliber shooting big rounds. You know what fuck with the big bra sound. And you can stop your speech with some the best on the ground. And let me extract exact tact and act like I'm bored to back and talk tickety clack. Abstract in fact, and if you subtract from that, that I'm cracked, then you're gonna get whacked. Right. Right. Heart attack, but the northern line. Exactly, go inside. So time. Preach. Pretty funny. Preach. Say that again? Say that one more time. Man's not a performing monkey. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think image should play a part with anyone full stop. Like female rapper, male rapper, female R&B singer, rock singer, jazz singer. Like, I don't, music is for your ears. The way we're sexualized. Yeah, that pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. <laughs> just put it straight, it fucks me off. Like, I, I don't understand it. It's just like, well, I do get it because like, women are beautiful, do you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, like, you can be an ugly fuck if you're a man and you spit. <laughs> if I wasn't comfortable with it, I wouldn't commit to something that I wasn't comfortable with within myself because my message that I like to put out in my music is being yourself. Um, so I wouldn't conflict that myself. I wouldn't go against what I'm saying in my own music and what I stand for as a person. My passion is too valuable to invest into a fake concept. And to be honest, if I still class you as a mate, it's about time I air you out like a bait phrase. The friends that remain in my path are in my family chain. I ain't got the time to play as if it's school days. I don't move fake ways. I do feel like humanity is lost now and I feel like generations they do need guidance. And I feel like us as musicians now, we are going to be the leaders for whoever's below us. I think being a mother is, um, is a really important part of my identity. So it's important to my rapping and I think it will kind of inspire me to carry on because I'll have that connection with the next, the next generation below me, which I think will be really important. And I hope to inspire my daughter to do it as well. And it, it also, it does, kind of make it difficult as well um, being a mother with young children as well sometimes you're like really kind of entrenched in like being a mum and like if you're being a mum so much of the time it doesn't leave you that much headspace to kind of be you know your own person so you kind of lose a bit of your identity recall that the lyrics had nothing even to do Relevant with the with visuals the video, yeah. so I was like wow these men just literally want to gag up some girls and like be drapes in them across and it was all like flashing lights and black and white and like oh man it just made me feel it actually genuinely made me feel ill like it's it's proper mad man like but young yeah. people are so impressionable so you tell them something's cool and they'll believe it's cool you could tell them you could preach some bang bang drug dealing type lyrics and if that's what they're told is cool they're not even hearing the content half the time, yeah. but then they're, they're like, this is cool, and they subject themselves to all those messages, and suddenly it becomes ingrained, integral part of their culture. But, for example, we were at a school the other day, and there were this table of girls that had written a rap, that we make them write raps and stuff, and suddenly they were really motivated, and I dropped something to them, and they loved to hear it, yeah, yeah. But then they asked out of their own will, they go, ah, oh, do you rap? Because they saw another female role model, and they wanted to be inspired by her, they loved her character, yeah. and she dropped a lyric on them, and it was pure positivity, pure consciousness, like re real stuff. And they would have just as easily got hyped about and gassed over some bang, bang, drug dealing, so mad, miso mad misogynistic lyrics, but she was giving them positivity and they walked away like inspired, motivated and like, yeah, that's what I'm going to look out for. And that was based on her dropping some positivity. <laughs> having said, thank you. Uh, having said that, all of this, um, I do tend to rap about sex a lot, but you know, rap about what you're good at. <laughs> and what you know about setting on top shit. Stand next to you and get your cocks right up. I'm sorry to be rude, but I love the stuff. Um, well I can I do do 
do conscious bars, I do do conscious bars, but um, sex is fun. Actually, I had been moving away from that a lot since I, I was in New York because I was getting a lot of um, guidance and I wrote a whole track about trainers, um, um, a lot of conscious lyrics and just things that people know about. For me, my music is, you know, the bar is stay true, honest to you and never an illusion and that's it. Like, if I pick my pen up, it's just because I felt to write or I had a topic that I kind of want to put on a CD and I actually have an intent to write. Since the start, it's always been storytelling and it's always been storytelling. So I'll create a character, create a sc scenario, but the scenario is something that happens to people. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's just always been like that. Why, I don't know, but it's just kind of just built itself. And it's like the more I do it as well, and obviously the older I get and the more I live, the more I know. Apart from that, my only my only principles and my elements are simple as peace, love, unity, having fun, knowledge. As long as that's in my music, like I'm happy with it. If it's missing a bit, then I'm a bit sad, but sometimes it might not be in a fun mood, it might be a deep, dark track, but that's what I'm about mainly. That's what I want my music to represent. If it's to represent anything, then it's hip hop. I've got a track called You Can't about you can't put your little dick inside me um, and fuck you basically about all the times which is most of the time when guys are like yeah yeah, yeah I want to work with you yeah yeah I've got this beat yeah let's get on this track together let's do whatever together and then you go around there and they're like yeah yeah five minutes of music and then they just try and bang you it's, and it's just out of order and you're a gimmick and usually the only, you're the only girl in the room like if, if anyone comes on to you it's only because you're the only fan in the room it's not because anyone actually oh gosh, it's cut a bit cut a bit I'm going to break it down for you, just now. This song is for the ladies, old women to tiny cobblers. Get a job and work real hard. To that I say, cobblers, cobblers, cobblers. Take it easy like me, get knocked up. From then on, rent is free. Because there is so much degrading musicians out there that don't care about women, ladies or, or misses, they only care about bitches and hoes and da 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 da. I feel like we need, we, not just me, but we do need a significant number of uplifting artists, male and female, to take it back and revolve it back around so people do have self-respect for themselves and other people. So maybe you want to touch on why you felt like it was important to, to have such emphasis on, on that? Yeah, yeah, the Dope MC chorus that I have to beg it with my body because I got my self-esteem. I'm just, I don't know, I guess I just want people listening to know that like I don't need you to look at me and think I'm sexy or be jealous of the way I look because I've got my own self-esteem which drives me to, um, to achieve things and to want to do things. I don't need to take it from the way I look. I spit it thicker than a bag of man, girl, or your tea. Half these artists are hard up, they're bluffing with their pee. Yeah, I have to beg it with my body because I got my self esteem. I'm kind of willing it. <laughs> I'm kind of like, when I say the chorus, I like, I'm willing other people to feel that way. I want you to feel like that way. I want other women to feel that way. I want other girls to feel that way. I don't need to beg it with my body because I got my self esteem. So, yeah. When people say they're a conscious rapper, that's for me, the key to being a conscious rapper. It's not necessarily about a certain style of clothing, a certain video producer moving with a certain click. Nah, it's actually about being conscious of how your words resonate and the effect they have. So you can say something negative and be a conscious rapper as long as you're conscious of the effect that it has. But I think a lot of people speak and don't realise the yeah, effect. Not... There's this whole thing of like, kind of what? What rapper are you? What what's this? What's that? And it's like, well, kind of just like if you're yourself when you're spitting, you're kind of yourself, isn't it? Like, I presume that's kind of conscious on a level, um, quite emotional. You know what I mean, a lot of the time, uh, a lot of my older stuff is a lot more angry, proper angry, like teenage rapper. Um. <laughs> Growing up as a female, you go through phases of feeling like you've got to be this way more, this way more. I even kind of, you know, sometimes feel it now, like you know, getting older and stuff feeling like people want to see you be more womanly, but what, that's someone's idea. You know what I mean? Like, we could all keep living up to some, the same idea that someone has somehow manipulated into our brains as a society, but I'm just me, I'm very comfortable with me. And I believe that makes me sexy, knowing who I am. 
So if that wasn't good enough for a label, bye. <laughs> in any industry where like it's like women are like do less than like footballers or F1 drivers yeah. or anything yeah. like if it's or boxing, when it's a girl doing it, it like you can use it to your advantage because you're like, oh, girls doing really well in a male dominated team. But hopefully one day we'll get to the point where someone's just a good rapper. As much as um, there is a certain amount of misogyny, be it gimmicky and expected or not, from some male rap artist, I think people that don't help the situation and actually perpetuate it are the women at the front of the gigs, throwing themselves at boys, letting them sign their tits, acting like fucking hoes, like completely forgetting that they've got a brain and they've got values and they've got something to say as well. And like they're doing me a disservice and all the other women that like fought for any kind of right before. All the, other, all the women over the world that don't have the right to be independent and then they're fucking at the front of the show just saying all I've got is a fan please and music. <laughs> when you were touring was there a groupie culture at the time that's definitely yeah I mean we were four young men then um, minstrelling through Europe if you live in our house which is in Denmark and it's the second largest city in Denmark, which doesn't make it very big at all. And there's a rock and roll band playing, you go there, there's very little to do in mid-Denmark, uh, mid with all apologies, very nice place, but... And so, anything for some excitement, yeah, there was a groupie culture, yeah. I don't understand why gender is so important, in it? Like, if you're good, you're good, if you shit, you shit. You get me? Being a woman doesn't make you shit and being a man doesn't make you good. you got amazing male rappers and you've got amazing women rappers. You've got shit women rappers and then you have shit male rappers. Do you think it's possible that women don't have enough, as much prominence in the scene purely because they're not as talented? <laughs> that, um, God. <laughs> um, Be honest. No, I don't think it's that. I think that, again, as I said with the time thing, like, with... There not being enough time, there hasn't been enough time where the scene's just like peaked for ages for women to come through. Women just have as much talent as men. It is a bit sad that, you know, it's like, oh, they're a really good female rapper, whereas if it's a male rapper, then it's just a rapper. They don't have to make the distinction between being a male or female. Um, but I think that's just life and just generally our culture, to be honest. Like, um, but yeah, females seem to be the lesser sort of half. I think that's just like an old fashioned, out of dated sort of view now, really. Isn't it? Like, isn't that just boring now? If a woman shows a man up on a track, <laughs> like, it's definitely going to bruise egos a little bit. Not, obviously, every man, because there's definitely a lot of men that supported me, and the main reason that I'm actually managing to kind of get somewhere is because there's certain people who are men who believe in me and who, like, are helping push that through, do you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah. I do think there is sometimes like a slight fear of a woman being better than a man on the track. So why do you think girls can rap as well as boys? Because they've got life jackets on. Because they've got life jackets on? Do you think girls are better at rapping than boys? Yeah. Saying female rapper, it, it sounds like we're a creature or... I was a f oh look, it's a female rapper. I don't really kind of get it. I kind of just see myself as a musician. I'm just an artist. Um, I think sexist comments generally don't register because it's nonsense. If my kid acts like a jerk, I go berserk. Oh, keep their ass in line. Oh hell, that's fine. Move a muscle, I'll get my wooden spoon. Kitty's scared of meeting their doom. Time to punish the full moon. Crack the whip, hell, and I love the power trip. I kind of use it to my advantage. I don't feel, I feel like it's, it's easier for me to get myself out there because there's not a platform, unfortunately, for female rappers. Um, 
but I don't see that. I don't see it as I need a platform for myself because I'm a female in this game. I just feel like it's down to me to work hard and make people listen to me and get my music out there. If you want to get your foot in the door and just get around, like literally put your feet on the road. Like the internet's great to reach out and find out about events and stuff and meet new artists. But I think unless you're actually going to go to events to support and grab a mic, you're not really going to get anywhere. Like. When we perform, we get the audience gas, and we give it all. Oh, I'm coming off and I am sweating. I sweat from my eyelids. I didn't even know you could sweat from your eyelids, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, we're putting it in. Every time I stand like an open mic night, I have to wait for the guy. Yeah, I have to wait for the fucking guy to give me the mic, grab it off a man and give me the mic, even though I've probably ripped every single one of them standing on the stage. Do you know what I mean? They physically have to take the mic out of a man's hand to give it to me. And I don't drink, I don't smoke, I've never touched al alcohol in my life, I've never smoked anything, I've never been high, I've never, I just do it because I love it and I get the energy from that. From life. Yeah, from life and the people, that, like it's an exchange of, it's an exchange of energy, you know? So, yeah man, see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. I haven't ever done a show before to be perfectly honest. I'd like to, but I'm like a weird person, I just get proper like, freaked out by shit and then I'm like, oh, get too stoned, not do anything and like not do it. I don't know. I'd love to do a show and that's definitely like the plan for the future. Like hopefully just play like around the UK and the world maybe one day. But yeah, I don't really see why there should be any limitations. I just think fucking go for it if you want to do it. It is a slight, uh, just a slightly smaller city. Mm -hmm. um, do you find uh, that restricts you? Um, do you feel you'll end up moving? Like, Brighton's got a really, really tight little scene. Like, there's definitely so many hip-hop heads here, and it is really sick. I think I've definitely thought about, like, moving to London. I think that there's more nights. There's just more opportunity, I think. Um, but there's definitely a lot of support in Brighton. I mean, people holler at me from their different places. Oh, is it just that you can't, I like, just, necessarily, like, fit them in on all I just, no, I actually, I have not been booked, like, to perform out of London, apart from twice. So, That's and mad. people are always hollering at me, yeah. Or if they do want you to, I've had, like, a few kind of, like, Wolverhamptons and Bristols and stuff. Okay, they don't nice. want to pay you. Yeah, well, originally, I grew up in Wolverhampton. Um, it's a good city to grow up in, but I think once you're of adult age, it's kind of quiet, it's dead. I think... There's hip-hop there, but it's not hip hop -y. it's very rap culture -y. There's a lot of grime there, which is cool, there's a lot of battle rap, but I think uh, I was hungry for something a bit more, something a bit more rootsy, something more organic. I feel like if you're from like a small town and there's not a platform for music, there's not really radio stations, there's not really shows that go on, there's not really award ceremonies, there's not really that much scene that's happening, um, it can be a longer process for you to get yourself out there, but it's still not an impossible process, you know? Uh, before, it was, I, I rapped about when I was angry, because it was a good outlet, I guess, turning something negative to positive. Uh, but now, I guess as I'm becoming more conscious and spiritual as a person, I'm becoming more conscious as well. But it's still a similar anger sort of thing, because you're angry about how the world is. I'm really methodical about quite a lot of things, but I think with a track I'll probably write down a list of things I actually want to involve within the, within the structure of the song, within the first verse, the second verse, what I want the hook to represent. A bit of everything really mate, it's not, it's not really too political. I think I used to write bars a like, bit more like that, but... Um, yeah, I kind of went off that a bit and just sort of went a bit mad, to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just random as fuck and take it or leave it, basically. It's the way I see it. I put reality as a theme throughout everything, so I feel like that's why most people can relate to it. So I feel like people will gravitate towards it and learn from it and know that everyone does experience pain and not everyone experiences genuine happiness. So if they can listen to me and know that I, I feel I understand you're going through something or someone else has gone through it as well it it gives them hope do you know what I mean so I feel like that is my purpose especially with women as well I feel like women are just gone in general I don't like to put myself in a box of music I like to be open uh, to be able to create I just like to create you know so um, I'm inspired through you know the old school sound and you know poetry and hip-hop and 
you know, neo soul and R and B and old school reggae. So it's like an infusion of a sound. <laughs> so I just like to create. It's so easy to just get in touch with people. There's so many on for mics. There's like, if you've got a bit of cash in your pocket, there's so much you can do, and it's just the opportunities are endless here. I know the world's a big place, but I think London's definitely a good starting point for me. Plus, all my friends are on tagging wall, so I've got no one to socialise with. Hold tight. I kind of felt that I would have to seek outside of Bristol to, you know, get studio time and things like that. But then very quickly I realised that that wasn't the case. Um, and Bristol <laughs> is one of the best scenes, literally, I think, in the UK for music. Um, especially that kind of underground scene. Um, which I actually do love. Even when I was in Wolves, like every other weekend I'd be on the train or on the coach for like three hours just to get to London, just to hit up and up a mic and get like 10 minutes on the mic and network afterwards. And I think after that, that's how you get bookings and that's how people get to know you. That's how you get your practice and your confidence. And I do see a lot of rappers, like sometimes people will hit me up and say, oh, do you know anyone like promoter wise? Like I don't have a promoter and I don't have an agent, I don't have a manager, I don't have nothing. I just have Facebook and event invites like that. That's me. We do so much we in do London, do so much. and we've got we've done just, like big places. We've done South Bank. We've had Channel Four on us. We've had BBC. We've been on BBC yeah, you're Three. Jazz Cafe, we? Jazz Cafe. Like, like we do big things. Time. Time. Yeah, we we get time. booked and paid in London, and I've and same with Luton, and same with Nottingham. So I've like they're the ones I said yes to, and I do, and they're good big events. Yeah. So I'm gonna think, okay, like I know my worth, yeah, I know my value, so I'm gonna have my standard up there. Like. What do you hope to achieve? In music. <laughs> Whatever we meant to achieve, you know what I mean? Me and Winch are just going to um, carry on. We're going to get better, put out good music, speak to as many people as we can. Well, if everything goes to plan with everything in New York, then I'm hoping to get signed by the end of next year. Wicked. Finish my album, get all my videos done, get signed. With your plan. <laughs> yeah, and then eventually, one day, I'm going to meet MF Doom and he's going to do a track with me because I love him and he was the soundtrack of my adolescence. <sighs> Doom, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> Have you started recording music? Yeah, I've got um, an EP that should be coming out soon with a guy called Freddie Pims. Um, got a couple of tunes that are going to be on One Line Sound mixtape. Um, but yeah, I just want to do loads of stuff really. It's going to be quite like a varied sort of taste in beats and stuff like that. Some of it's going to be really dark, and some of it's going to be faster, more like dead player sort of stuff. Divine interruption, devilish concussion. Can't remember what discussion I was rushing. Spinning like a wheel, no reason to feel. Lost marbles, then a date with Satan. No safe haven, chained to the seal. Aiming to steal every ounce of what helps us to bounce. Crouch and roll, by weed of the doll. Dove feathers like the clap of a hand. Wing spam, my fling ran, ink bled from the back of my head. I caught it in a jar and wrote what it said. You won't get a wafer with an albatross. I met Jesus, he was fucking ultra cross. Told me the whole world was meant to be lost. Whatever's meant to happen for us will happen. You know, hopefully we can you know, a lot more gigs, build a bigger fan base, get hopefully international and just speak to as many people as we can, help as many people as we can do the music. But just hope the universe meets us halfway, man. Get I me, mean, you only get back what you put out, so we're just gonna be consistent. But with the other girls, the recording girls, the girls doing their videos, you don't always need to fucking twerk or get your tits out or suck on a phallic object just for people to to listen. People are gonna listen to you because you've got skill. So stop thinking you don't have enough skill. Yeah, because you can just put a big t-shirt on and rock it. Oh, what's that? Something's cooking in the oven. My CD's getting burnt. I'm bound to sell a dozen. Quickest, fastest, bestest rapping mama. Hip hop bopping about the cuisine. No how much do you, it's so mean. I said it once, I'll say it again. It's so clean in my den, my friend. My fool, no matter how hard you try, you see, you'll never be as pleasant as me. Dishwashers, mops, and wipes don't come for free. Well, the gimmick only lasts so long. If you want someone to listen to a 45 minute set, a gimmick's not going to last that long, so you do have to deliver with really good material. 
and then and then by that point hopefully it's less about what sex you are and more about just what kind of rapper you are against other people not sexes People are manipulated to think that you can't be friends with another woman or there can only be one woman at one specific time in rep. You get me? There can only be that one chick. And if there is another one that tries to come through at the same time, you either have to eliminate them, beef with them, be better than them. Or it's like, cause it's uncommon as well. I think that plays a big part into it. So when there is more than one at the same time, you, it's like people can only acknowledge the one and it's the one that's better. So they're always pinpointed against each other. So I think that looking from an outsider's perspective as well, some people might, some women might not just want that. You know what I mean? Some people might be a bit hesitant and apprehensive to, to go there because they don't want to deal with the issues that come along with that. So they probably don't push their music as much as they could because they just don't want to deal with all of that. Uh, there's not much female presence in UK hip hop, um, which means that less girls are inspired to get up or have the confidence to get up themselves. I think the more the more females that there are in UK hip hop, then the more people will be um, inspired to see that too. <laughs> the scene is quite small, anyway, and it's for me UK hip hop. It was like peaking at a certain time, right, and then it like kind of dropped off. Do you know what I mean? It's just constantly doing this like I don't know, fluctuation or whatever, and like the scene. So like it, I'm not sure if it's just had like that proper time to allow like women to come through. Okay. I'm not a quitter though. Um, what does it say on the back of your... So oh. really well, your jacket? You have papers, don't you? Profound. Very true. I have made another observation in my mind just now. Yeah, um, let's hear it. Not only are there, in UK hip-hop, not that many female artists getting exposure, but as far as I'm aware, are there any labels or clothing companies or any associated businesses that are owned by women? I'm not aware of any. Um, talking about that, there is Shady, um, MC Angel and Serena, they actually have the Lyrically Challenge, Challenge label that's owned by or was founded by MC Angel and they're doing really well with that. They're all female orientated, but really that's the only thing. I wanted to talk to you because you set up the Mistress of Rhyme. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about that and why you wanted to set it up. Now? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> oh, well, I started Mistress of Rhyme because um, I basically used to watch a lot of YouTube channels like um, Don't Flop channels and SBTV and stuff, and there was never any females. There was like maybe one or two token females, and it was always like a, it seemed like a token thing, like there was a big stigma attached to it. So I wanted to set up Mistress of Rhyme Entertainment not to segregate the artists further but to like give girls a platform that they can showcase their talents. When you're not willing to put out like straight up commercial music, like all that shit, it is a lot harder and the journey and the route is a lot longer than it is compared to someone who would just put out a quick pop song. A mediocre lyrics, <clears throat> get a girl on a hook, boom, put it out. Yeah, I've, I've had a bit of a gap, a couple of years of like making, recording music. Um, I find it just really difficult, like I was saying, um, before about having like the headspace to really feel inspired and to like put any tracks down because um, of my second child and work and everything. So my life is really, really busy. But again, I think I work well when I'm really busy. Um, I think it does inspire me when I've got kind of more dimensions to my life. So um, I like to do music, I like to work, I like to do stuff with the kids. I like doing lots of different things. I find that quite inspiring. And I think I'm just, um, yeah, I'm focusing on a project at the moment that I hope to be bringing out I'm not too far away. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't given up yet. I think when, when you, you stay true to the art, art itself, it's not that less people care, but it's, it's, lo it's just a longer route that you have to go through and you have to get the serious music heads like the rap heads and the hip hop heads and the boom bap heads, to, you have to find them. And I think as long as you actually get out Take some CDs in your pocket and if people don't want to buy them, like, kind of have to earn your stripes, except that you're going to have to give them out for free and let people hear you. Once you've earned your work and you want to, like, earn your money, that's cool, but, yeah, put the work in, man, get your feet on the road. They're, uh, 
rehearsing right, you know, they're performing to their audience, they're giving the energy, they're doing all their own online promo, they're, they're doing everything right. So I don't feel like I can be like, well, I think more the good female rappers need to do this, this and this and this. I think they're really trying. By staying true to the art, I do believe that you can make a living off it, a very good living off it, but you need patience and it, is, it will take longer. I think it's the, the conditioning of the male hip-hop audience that isn't allowing it to, to spread. And also, if you're talking about mainstream, obviously we know what the mainstream want girls to do. She had it twisted, mimicking the videos, the Gargas, Rihanna's, Beyonce's in these silly hoes. Walking round, exploiting her skin, talking dirty with the man, them brushing off sin. You see, we different. We rock high tops and baggy jeans, whilst the other side chicks in crop tops and designer jeans. We drive our own whips, they look for limousines. We want a family man, they want celebrities. We different. We rock tracksuits and caps, we listen to grime and spit bars to rap. But the UK hip hop scene, like more promoters need to just get involved, book, support it. Even if it's them opening up, even though I think some of them should be headlining. I've seen like male uh, hip hop artists that are like, I feel like they're waste man, so, and I'm like, how are they even performing? But I don't want to hate on them, they're doing their thing. But I've seen girls that are better, and I'm just like, you should be opening up for her. But it's just like when you go to Cypher, for example, or like you've got to really fight to get the mic and then these boys will fucking nick the mic off you and then all they'll say is, oh, listen, I won't even say anything anyway. It's just this fucking testosterone charge bullshit. So I guess when a, when a female steps into the mix and obviously a, a female energy is like fluid and completely different to a man's, they don't fucking like it. So they don't, they don't want to let you on mic. That's why I've got my mic switched off before. Like, I'm like, yeah, can you give me the mic? They're like, nah, just because I'm a girl. really essential to get signed I don't think it's essential as it is sorry I don't think it's essential um, at all but I've just been around people who are talking like that I never before I ever met my US manager I wasn't thinking like that at all so no, I don't no. think it's essential it's not essential balance yeah like that's all it is it is balance it is balance you know like there's nothing wrong with guys like, you know I'm not anti-men you know People should like help each other out more. They shouldn't be treating it as a competition, especially females because we're like minority or whatever. I don't even want to say it like that. It's just frustrating, like after a while. But you know, sometimes we can use it to our advantage. We can put on all female hip hop nights. Yeah, and yeah. Um, what else did I ask? Um, your influences, uh, why you did it, why you do it, where do you hope to be? Okay, where do you they're, hope all to be? <laughs> they're all coming. <laughs> well, I've got aspirations, I suppose. Want to be like performing big stages. Play at Boomback would be pretty sick. I don't know why, but I've always got this thing in my head that I want to collaborate with Justin P one day. Um, it might be just a bit of a pipe dream, but yeah, who knows. <laughs> I don't see anything as impossible, so I feel like I will only get as far as how much work I want to put in. I don't feel like I won't get somewhere because I'm a female and because that smells better, because if anything, that would be a fire that would burn inside of me to make me push myself to do better and I would want to, if there was those type of boundaries that I thought that was visible, visibly up, I would definitely be one that would be someone that would want to, you know, take them down. Um, I want to be of the best ability that I can be by being around really good producers and really good rappers. It's always just been me in my room on my own with instrumentals on YouTube. So that's why I moved to England, so, so I'll meet people that would like make them come better. All I want to do is be the best I can be. Um, I might get paid to do what I love. I obviously want to do something like music based. Um, obviously, like it'd be amazing to like actually fully succeed <laughs> and be able to live off music. Do you know what I mean? But um, as Bobby Johnson. But yeah, I don't know. I think yeah, as long as it's music based, anything really. It's just, the industry is a funny thing, you know. I I'm not really in the industry, so I don't really know the politics behind why there is lesser females out there, you know, to the population. But I don't think it's an impossible task, you know. If you want it, you can get it. Maybe, maybe there's not that many females because they, were, they, they, they doubted themselves, they felt that they couldn't get out there. So maybe it's for females to start actually believing in themselves maybe a bit more and not letting anyone tell them, tell them no. Yeah, we're just talking about the 
interview and reflecting a bit about some of the things I've said and I was just thinking that like thinking about motherhood and rapping and I actually didn't really start kind of taking it seriously until after my first child anyway so I've kind of always been a mother and a rapper really I mean before that I wasn't taking it seriously I wasn't really recording tracks so what a lovely accompaniment how fitting I was trying to like reduce my hours at work and make my income off my actual talents of like painting creating stuff I'm quite handy I'm good at making stuff so that's my plan like my room is literally a workshop of books and junk I'm currently like um, studying music production and like my kind of ambition within that um, is to yeah create like a moving studio so like taking it to like schools, yeah, youth groups and things like that. Don't stop! Don't stop making music! Like don't give up, don't think that you're not good enough because you're a girl. I have met so many people, like I'm not the best rapper in the world, I hold my hands up. I do it because I enjoy doing it but I've met so many people that straight off the bat don't even want to hear me spit because I'm a girl. Like they literally say, oh, girls can't rap. Like I've heard that so many times and it aggravates me. And stuff like that doesn't get to me because not a lot does. But I know there's girls out there that might be sitting there, they might have pads and pads of lyrics and they're doing nothing with them because people have told them that they're not good enough. So don't listen to them. Go write, go spit, do what you want. There's probably people that write sick bars and just never put it out for some reason but I think if you've got stuff then fucking do it if you're scared like that's even more of a reason to push yourself because then once you're not scared anymore you just fucking you can do anything like and that sounds really cringy but it's true mate so would you want to learn to rap yeah then I can really rap I can get you a teacher okay you want to learn mm -hmm. okay can you get me a teacher do you know who said would teach you yeah. big res